the wider symptom is why is it that in the modern era black societies have a problem creating a functional state why so far so good those that's a bigger question to ask um but in this particular instance we're sitting down we're taking a look at mm-hmm. in this situation where 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 you know i don't when people sit down i don't even know what to tell them it's like look man i don't know what you're expecting and for the people that will come again i want to tell you well in we're going to re-strategize in four years it's like bros please i don't know i've i've yeah. been i've 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 found it challenging in the past to articulate how stupid that ideology is and it's comical year in year out mm-hmm. and I, it's been going on since 2003 in my opinion yeah. so when somebody comes and starts talking about well you know you have to re-strategize again it's one of three things either you're extremely naive or you decide to become oblivious as um like most nigerians are bury their heads in mm-hmm. the sand and, and mm-hmm. blame blame the the people that are suffering the victims of, mm-hmm. the, of the crime the mm-hmm. everyday persons out there in nigeria or the third option you're extremely evil mm. you have some level of inherent evil inside you you're telling yeah. people in mm-hmm. four years it will be different <laughs> in, yeah. in, which, in which way shape of does this, does yeah. this lead to any difference you have these same people who in the last since 1999 i mean look at your weekend his yeah. wife is a judge uh he's been um i think he started from local government chairman to commissioner to this thing. same thing with that amici that's coming out starts mm-hmm. from local government mm-hmm. chairman to speaker of the house to this thing to minister speaker and this one guy mm-hmm. is drawing pension and resources from all these so positions. many different while, levels yeah while contributing mm-hmm. <laughs> they are telling people like you know what in four years time it's a bit mm. yeah it's like it's, oh, it's, it's yeah it's it's um been in nigeria i've had conversations with a cross-section of people and at every level there is that um sort of that rather uh dismaying quality to nigerian public discourse so some people talk about oh the judiciary has disappointed us so uh we may go the way of Gabor or Niger, there might be a, a, a coup d'etat. And people are talking about this prospect with a sense of, of hope. And I say to them, have we forgotten our history with military regimes? We don't have a good history with military regimes in our country. And if you're thinking of uh, th- the only uh, possible positive outcome of a military regime is that all the centers like the National Assembly, like the um, political appointees who drain the public treasury will no longer be there under a military regime. But that simply leaves resources that generals, and even if it is uh, junior officers who uh, carry out a coup, they quickly promote themselves to generals. And so you're going to see generals and you're going to see politicians recycle themselves into psychophantic servants uh, and stooges of a military dictatorship. So I don't think that the military is an option that we ought to look at with any sense of, um, of, of, you know, um, of hope, right? And then some people will say, well, God is in control, you know, God could decide to do this. And I say to them, you know, again, you know, you and I are both uh, fairly devout Catholics. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I tell people, God does not owe Nigeria and Nigerians anything, right? God has given us amazing resources, natural resources, has given us a great population, has given us a cater of educated people right but somehow we keep going for mediocrity we keep going for criminals we keep going for knaves we keep going for frosters at the hem of our political affairs right and then we turn around and say yeah god is going to clean up our he's going to deodorize our country as it were right so so we choose the worst Mm -hmm. possible elements to preside over our affairs um energized the young people who came out and voted 
in unlikely places labor party candidates were elected into the national assembly into state assemblies have we seen a quantum of change have we seen a sense of transformation from these people in their various locations well there is a state a state like abia where my good friend alex oti is actually sort of making some impact so I, I can tell you been in nigeria for going on two weeks that the poverty the misery index is way out of charts right i was speaking to a woman who sells rice and she was telling me that by christmas a bag of rice could be approaching 70,000 naira in a country where the federal government pays 30,000 naira a month as minimum wage where most of the states in the, in our country still pays 18 to if you are lucky 25,000 naira as minimum wage so somebody has to put together 3 months or 4 months of their salary to buy a bag of rice okay that's the quality of desperation that nigerians are trusting you know and so the fact that we sit down and we think okay is is god or the military as if the military are not nigerians you see um just like a lot of people put hope in the judiciary as if the judiciary is not as corrupt as those who run the elections to start with as don't who run the parties as the police and the uh, security agencies that enable um electoral criminality so i felt with the peter obi campaign there was a little chance that the question of restructuring nigeria needed to arise i didn't see a situation where peter Obi will sit down as president of nigeria for four years and at the end of four years if he whether he gets elected or not he will drive back to aguilaria and sit down and be like yeah he did his best to, to, without to answering the question yes. to Agulo, sorry thank you yes. to, to go where they beat up a a young girl who went to pull print who who ended up with a printout that wasn't her result to, to yeah. enable her get um financial rewards from mm -hmm. it we ended up with the whole country beating her up and mm -hmm. a, a large segment of the population beating ethnical Igbo people up. Yeah. Even, though, even though the same ethnical Igbo people are the ones doing the best, both state-wise and individual-wise in other states are doing the best in the same um, high school leaving uh, certificate called uh, SSC. Even though, when you, even, even though the top uh, five states and then you add the rivers and other states where you have, all those states are all uh Igbo states and even you know people were still beaten and now you have a guy that can't even produce an ssc result but you beat a little girl who in her young mind somehow some way ended up with a result um maybe it's a fault of hers or wasn't ended up with a result that wasn't hers to claim accolades and claims um, financial rewards to try and go to college with this yeah. financial reward she clearly seems to be mm -hmm. a girl that cannot afford to go to college and her best bet was to go out uh might have been so it seems yeah. to be mm -hmm. that her best bet was to go out and create get a this thing it seems to be that was the case yeah <laughs> you know it seems to be that's my own deduction of what i saw a girl is like i what am i writing ssc for mm -hmm. let me go and uh, after all we all forge things in nigeria let me go and forge this uh, highest this thing it seems to be mm -hmm. um but whatever yeah. it was it wasn't a result in legitimate way yeah in my so opinion. somehow my my i have a deep um a fundamental um antipathy to military dictatorships as a rule part of it is that um as frustrated as i am with the um this this thing that would misnamed democracy in nigeria you know because it's not democracy in a lot of ways then for me what we have in tinubu's government is actually a dictatorship by by uh, a group of men and perhaps a few women who are not in uniform but it's a coup what happened in february in nigeria was a coup d'etat properly understood um so which is why i as 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 you've noticed i've never called tinubu president is the same position that i took when yaradua was selected uh if you look at you know you and i you know pretty much agree that abasanjo uh was uh an imperial president in a lot of ways abasanjo was actually better as a military ruler than he was as an elected president because he was imperial an imperial president when the occasion called for 
somebody softer in his instincts, somebody who could have encouraged an independent judiciary, encouraged a credible electoral process, who could have laid the foundations for meaningful takeoff of development in Nigeria. If Obasanjo has spent 16 or more billion dollars which he invested in the power sector, and we got the kind of mess that he left, basically uh, a situation that remained unchanged, right? Um, so Obasanjo was a disaster as a, as as, a, an, as an elected president and it was under his rule that he declared that the elections were do or die affairs where the pdp pretty, pretty much took uh conquered any state that they wanted with the of course with the um, a- active uh complicity of uh, Morrissey Wu, uh a professor who tainted the office of electoral commissioner even though of course uh subsequent successors to the office of INEC chairman have actually beaten his record of of fraud and incompetence and uh and ineptitude and so on um i would like a situation where there is organic change in nigeria i sort of see it so instead of expecting god to solve our problems which god doesn't owe us anything uh never owed us anything has given nigerians too much or expecting the military to solve the problem. I think that it behooves Nigerians to do, excuse me, perhaps what young people did uh, in 2020 uh, in the NSARS movement, which was what they reenacted in electoral times uh, in February, right? I think that we're going to come that the most likely scenario, given the deepening misery in the country, is that we'll come to a moment where Nigerians will say enough. I suspect it's going to be uh, spontaneous. It's going to be uh, maybe one person who acts out of desperation. And then so many people will then rise and say, we're no longer going to accept a situation where the men and women we sent to the National Assembly and the people who occupy office of president and governors and commissioners and so on um, accumulate to themselves obscene amounts uh, in salary and privileges and ordinary people with their entire monthly salary cannot even buy a bag of rice i just i don't know i just i i see a society where i talk you talk with, you talk with people you know people people are just waking up and, and moving around as best as they can 